All right, folks, another edition here of Krantz's Corner. Very excited about this one right here. As you can see, my guest here, and you can't see the sign, but I always like pointing to it anyway. We're at the Players Lounge yes, Barbershop. Sir. That's right, Stephen Jose's place, as I come and infiltrate once a week. And we have a special guest live here. Just got his hair cut a couple minutes ago, so he's nice and relaxed here. Ja'Cory Harris, welcome to Krantz's Corner. We appreciate it. Hey, man, appreciate you having me, man. It's a, it's a wonderful setting to have this uh, podcast done in. And, uh, you know, Steve... Uh, He's a great friend of mine, so got the new barbershop. It's beautiful, man. It is. It's really nice the way they did all this. Put everything up. Jerseys are up. Everybody's stuff is here. It's it's, it's a barbershop, yet it's more of a kind of hangout place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, like the lounge in here. There's some booze over there. Like It's just nice to come here. You're not just walking in and getting a haircut and leaving. Like You can hang out for a little while also. Yeah. Steven Jose did a great job. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, a, it's the player's lounge, man. You know? Steven, he's been talking about this for the longest, and to see him finally bring it to to life is, uh, I'm happy for him. Yeah. It's been a long time coming. Yep, me, no, I'm, I'm right there with you. I've known Steve a long time. Talk about your relationship with Steve. How did that all come about, by the way? Because as long as I've known Steve, Steve <laughs> has brought your name in every conversation that we have. No, it's the same, man, because, uh, you know, it, it's hard to get rid of Steve, man. He's one of the friends. I'm like, I can't get rid of him. <laughs> he always around. No, but right. that's my boy, man. That's one of my best friends. Uh, and, uh, you know, growing up, I always thought, you know, you had to have best friends from when you was a, a young age and growing up. And, but Steve, one of the people that helped me realize, like, nah, that, that can easily be a change, man, with uh, just meeting genuine people. Right. Um, you know, he would come down there to UM and cut. I got introduced to him, and then I would go down to his house. Um, I forgot what, on South, it was like 200th Street, uh, right. down south somewhere. We would be in, in the house. He just cut me in the bathroom. Um, you know, and the guys like Lance Leggett and Jabaris James, those are the people that introduced me to him. Right. So, um, yeah, and we had a relationship ever since then. I, I remember I remember when everything started popping off, I had given no. a shout out against Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma. Right. Won. I had uh, the U swag in the back of my head and uh, Aaron Andrews asked, well, what was that? And I told her, I was like, man, look, Steve Rivera, Kane's Barber, man, he the one who uh, he created this, man. And, uh, and then ever since then, it's been taken off for him. Yeah, that's awesome. That's good. That's, it's it's good to hear a relationship like that also that goes far back, still friendly with the guy. Mm-hmm. It, you know, like you said, uh, I, I have a, a group of friends that I've been friends with since we're four or five years old. We're still friends. There's yeah. probably 12 of us when we started. Yeah. There's probably eight or nine of us here now. And that's rare. It's rare to have friendships like that when you're growing up, when you're going through everything in your life yeah. and you find that person like Steve or when you have a guy like that, one of your boys and you're friends with them, the rest, you're like, that's a true, that's a really yeah, yeah, yeah. true, cool friendship to have because yeah. you weren't neighbors with him growing up. You didn't know parents weren't all over the place yet. You met him, you became friends with him and good friends since I think it's a really cool kind of relationship yeah, to have I a good friendship. My, I still have my friends, my, sure. my, my four friends that uh, I grew up with, but then I have like guys that I, I do consider like brothers to me now. Right. You know, that, that couple of them on the fire department with me. Uh, and then Steve, he's one of them. So that, that'll that never change. I'm one of the people that, like, when it comes to, like, friendships, I, I really cherish them. And if you, right. If you're somebody I consider, like, my brother, then I'm gonna always be that for you. And that's the way it should be. And that's the way the real friendships are anyway. Yep. You, you could tell when you're buddies with somebody or you're friends with somebody. There is a difference there at some point. Yeah. You brought up firefighting. I got to ask it. How did that come about? How did that how did that start for you? Because obviously we'll get into the, the, the football playing stuff and Northwestern days and going to UM. I want to get into all that with you also, but I'm so intrigued because and you're gonna laugh at this, but like when did you become and I, I watch a lot of TV, when did you become a smoke eater? When when did a that smoke eater. Uh, Right. I, I saw that at a show and I knew I was gonna be yeah, talking yeah, to you yeah, and I wrote yeah, that yeah. down. They're talking about firefighters and smoke eaters. Like when did when did that whole thing come about? How did oh, it man. come about? You know, I think I kind of fell in love with mine in a different way. Um, of course, you, you, you love the going fires, but I also understand that, you know, fires are somebody losing their, their, right. their home. Right. Um, and I think firefighters, we're not excited that we're going on a fire. We're, we're, it's, it's more so you're excited that you're the one because you know that you can do the best job to mitigate this situation. Not that we want that situation to happen to a right. person, but we understand like guys that that truly love, uh, you know, the firefighting aspect of this job, is because they truly understand it. They're the one. They're the best at what they're doing. Right. Like if I play, like playing quarterback, like I want to be the one that's the starter because I know I'm the best person for this for this job. So uh, that's how we look at it because we do understand that this is somebody's house 
uh, that they're losing. Right. Um, so why not have the best of the best come put it out? So, uh, but then also I fell in love with the medical side of things because uh, I always wanted to be a neurosurgeon growing up. Wow. Okay. He used to be uh, Myron Rowe, man. He was someone I always right. like watched and see make it happen because I'm gonna be honest, I didn't have anybody to look up to 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 continue following that path. Right. Uh, so I didn't know it was possible to do football in that. And then as I'm, you know, getting ready to come into University of Miami, I think it was like early, and I see my role doing it, and I'm like, oh, it's possible. Sure. Um, but I still chose a different route, and um, but to come back full circle to something that, um, that I can still be athletic, and then I can still get that medical aspect side into it, and uh, and, and use the skills that I, that I already had from uh, high school because I was in a medical management program right. at, at Northwestern, so. To yeah. incorporate all that into one job and have everything that you have from football, I was like, yo, this is a no-brainer. Uh, it was something that I had thought about like a couple years before with my mom, and she right. knew a guy that was a firefighter, um, and she was telling me about it, but I had never like took that step until I decided that I did, that I was going to retire from football, and once I did that... I was like, okay, I found a different, I found another job, and I just waited for the fire department to throughout the whole process, about a year and a half, two year process, for me to finally get hired, and right. uh, the rest is history. We had a good, time. hey, I, I, I love this job. Right, that's, I mean, that's, it's amazing. You, you, like, you're glowing when you're talking yeah, about yeah, it. You yeah. can tell at that point. It, it's because it's rewarding. Right. So, you know, it's one thing to play football. You score a touchdown. You know. It's a, a, a small high real quick, but you got to go back and do it again and right. win the game. And, um, yeah, those memories last forever. But when you're able to, you know, show up on the scene and actually rescue a patient, uh, perform life safety, you know, measures, and then that person, you know, survives, or simply just having a conversation with somebody that's going right. through a mental crisis, um, I've done that. And to see the way people yeah. respond to you, People come back to the stations and want to deliver food because you saved their right. lives. Uh, that's where the, I guess, the difference is between sports and real life situations like that, uh, which makes you want to become, which makes you want to stay a firefighter and continue, you know, doing this job and appreciating every aspect of it. So, right. I love it. Uh, this, that's this, awesome, Corey. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like sitting next to you, and of course, I thought, and I'm sure people are watching this also. Oh, we'll talk about football. Talk about, yeah. I don't even want to. No, I don't even want to like get yeah. into that at that point. It's cool because I. Talk. But it's so nice the way you're talking about what you're doing yeah. now. Listen, a lot of guys, if they don't get to that next level, if they mm-hmm. don't get to the league and play 15 years in the league, yeah. they're bitter about it. They can't yeah. find something that, that they could kind of you know grasp onto. It's, you did, and I think that's hard. amazing. It's hard, man. I'm not gonna lie. It's um. It's hard. Like a lot of guys, I, I and I know some guys that 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 can't, well, that couldn't do that transition. Like, right. I was trying hard, their hardest to continue uh, pushing because it's like you're in a in a world of unknown. Right. You don't know. Like, should I give up on uh, my pursuit of football, pursuit of making it in, to the NFL, or I made it to the NFL but I got cut? Uh, should I go this route, that route? You've been doing this for twenty something years, and to have it. And especially when you're not ready for it to end, that can do something to you mentally. Because until you know who you are as a person, you will never be able to move on. And I remember getting hit in the game in 2016 up there in Canada. And the dude hit me, like, top of my crown, top of my head. Mm -hmm. And my whole spine, like, shifted. Right. I thought I was paralyzed. Right. But I wasn't. And when I got up, I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I don't know when I'm done, but I, I'm right. I'm you're mentally start done. My exit right, before. right, right. Uh, I'm healthy. I ended up signing with Montreal afterwards. Sure, but I was slowly planning my exit from football. I was like, "Look, I gotta, I gotta get out of here because I want to walk away with my body still intact. Um, you know, mentally, I don't right. want too many concussions. I've had concussions before." Sure. Feel like I feel some of the, you know, aftermath of those concussions sometimes. But um, you know, it came with the game, and I feel like I made the right decision. But I wish a lot of a lot more guys. I always express this to to people that when I see them, bro, the fire service is the perfect place for former athletes to come 
And whenever you feel like you can't get that same, like you don't know who you are, you can come to be a firefighter. And the camaraderie, the brotherhood, being in the locker room, being right. in the in the dorms, being in the in the fire station with these guys every day, is the same feeling you get when you in a part of a football team. It's the number one thing when I talk to anyone that's retired, left the game, had to leave early, or played a long mm-hmm. career, whatever it was. The number one thing yeah. I say, what do you miss? What do you miss the most out of everything? The locker room, the yeah. camaraderie, the guys, the guys around the locker room every day. We knew we had to be there at 6 a.m. for meetings, mm-hmm. 7 o'clock we're eating breakfast together. We're doing that. And that's the number one thing. So for yeah. you to say that, that's actually very interesting because a lot of guys will search for that yep. afterwards. Like yep. you said, they'll search for that and never find it after they're, they're playing Imagine, this. you know, I, I never like to bash like wives or anything like that or girlfriends or anything. But imagine you lose that, and now it's just you coming home. Empty house. And you're going right. empty house, or if, like, you got your wife or girlfriend, hey, why you ain't take out the trash when you left this morning <laughs> when you come back home from work or something? And now you, that's just that's your life now and it, because it's immediate change. Um, it's always, yeah, you, you got friends and stuff you can go to, but imagine, like, having it where you're, like, this is – Every third day, you know, I get to go hang with the boys, right. hang with the girls, and like what girls and, and boys are part of. And you just get to kick it, and yeah, you fight fights, you saving lives, sure. uh, but you also training, you also staying in shape, you also, you know, showing them a new recipe that you cook. Um, it's it's small things that you can uh, experience at the firehouse that keeps you mentally sane. And, and you need it in that job because you, we see some things that a lot of people can't can't endure. Right. Um, oh, because, I can't even imagine. I can't yeah. details of what you could yeah, probably I'm go into. Details, but, but the crazy part is, even if I asked you, I don't yeah. even know at that point if I would want you to say it because you're you're now one of the percentage of people mm-hmm. that when people are running out of their houses, running, running out of their buildings, mm-hmm. you're running in. Yeah, we're running. Like in. you're a different breed of person yeah. because there is a very small percentage of those people. In the world, I always tell people like that same the same thing, and uh, because everything you see on the news, we see it first, right? So we're actually there. (laughs) So if you hear something about the bright line, we were there first, right? So we we're seeing it mentally. So if you if you see one of these firefighters, just tell them hello, you know, hey, I I love you, I appreciate you, right? Because those things do mean a lot to some. Sure, not everybody. Is mentally strong like that, and uh, I think I do cherish the game of football for preparing me and like my upbringing and everything to prepare me mentally for certain things. Because uh, not everybody's like that. Not sure. everybody can, um, you know, look at that stuff over and over and over. Because some some people break, but it doesn't bother me because it's like I know at the end of the day, as long as I'm doing everything that I can to help this person. Uh, the outcome is out of my hands, so it's uh, I'm gonna do everything I can. Sure, yeah. But you know, the outcome is out of your hands. Right. No, it's, it's. I mean, it's fascinating what your line of work is now. Fascinating that you got into it, the story behind it, and everything. I just think it's 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 a story that needs to be told more. It's a story that needs to be out there more because you're a great example of someone who found that next step, who didn't take the wrong step take the wrong move like you found your next step and yeah. i think that that's hard for not just an ex-athlete for people in general yeah. if something does happen in their life or it ends whether it's someone who's working at the barber shop mm-hmm. my dad sells credit card machines yeah, yeah, yeah. if that ends trying to find that next that next step that next part you know the next stage in your life yes. and you found it you yeah. did it and you're obviously loving it because I, I love the story so far about yeah. that stuff that's Appreciate that is amazing it, um all right there's a picture here on the table <laughs> so we'll start with that right there um i was on the radio at the time when the northwestern kids were coming to miami yeah, yeah. i need to know what it was like during that recruiting and that process of you going to um and the pressure that i can only imagine was on all you guys for going there mm-hmm. but specifically you because you play a position that's really like the leader on the mm-hmm. field, the guy in the field. The most something goes wrong, Jacory. It was Jacory's fault. Yeah. Something went right, Jacory threw three touchdowns. That's why we won the yeah, game. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure there. But what was that like? That whole process in your life, because it was not a three month stage. We're talking about probably a two or three year stage where 
you're getting prepared, you're getting recruited, you know there's a lot of pressure to go to Miami, you're a Miami kid, so obviously that was probably one of your goals to get there, yeah. but what was that all like for you? It was it was one of the best experiences in my life, and I, and I credit that to, you know, my family, uh, my teammates, the guys I had around me, uh, the coaches, and, and the coaches that were recruiting me, because um, other than Urban Meyer, trying to recruit me to Florida and I'm, <laughs> I don't think a lot of people lied to me because at that time Tim Tebow was right, about right, to be the starter right, I'm like right. why are you even talking to yeah, me sir like, yeah, yeah. don't tell me come up lies. and be the backup <laughs> yeah. right right but you could you'll start but come up and be the backup yeah, I would have right. been that receiver over there. <laughs> right right or right. let's see how you do it in another position yeah, right. so you know other than that uh, it was a great process and uh, especially doing with those guys man uh, you know I just wanted to come and play with my brothers. I didn't care um, how it was going to get done. We all wanted to make sure we did it at home. Um, yeah, our dreams and things that we wanted to happen uh, didn't happen the way we wanted it to, but at the end of the day, we all, if I'm not mistaken, all of us walked away with degrees. Right. And all of us graduated. And that's something that a lot of people didn't expect, you know, inner city kids to come to a university and actually – you know, follow through with their dreams right. and accomplish things that um, most people, you know, aren't able to. Um, but it was a great, it was a great process. It was a great plan with these guys, man. Going undefeated, never losing in high school. Right. Uh, not too many people can say that. I mess with a lot of guys. They'd be like, "Oh, we would beat y'all. We would beat y'all." And I say, "Okay, we're, you know, in high school, they'd be like, oh, we would beat y'all." I'm like, "What was your record in high school?" Oh, we was 12 and 1. I was like, all right, you got one loss. You can't even be in this conversation. Right, right, <laughs> you lost to somebody. Right, we didn't. Right, we didn't. So, right. so you can't be in the conversation. And, um, but, you know, I respect everybody at the end of the day. Uh, I'm not one of the guys that argue all day about high school, college, pros, and nothing like that. Football is now, it's, it's, it's like not even secondary. It's way back there in my life. Right. I watch it, I enjoy it. But man, watching those guys get hit and everything, I'm like, I'm glad I don't play it anymore. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, man. But um, yeah, I'm I'm happy that we I got the chance to, you know, be one of the people to experience something like that. But especially, I think of uh, and dealing with, you know, we we had the media, we had good media coverage, man. Right. Like since we were 16 years old, we had guys interviewing us. Um, I remember Manny Navarro. I remember and I just right. seen him at practice yeah, on that's right. Monday. Uh. He been with us, him, Donovan, McK Donovan Campbell. I remember seeing those guys all the time on the sideline. Joe Rose, yourself. That's right. You know, hearing you guys on talk about us and everything. So it's um, it's it was a fun experience, and, and we I truly appreciate everybody that was involved in my life uh, during those times. I don't think people realize if you're not from down here, <clears throat> Broward or Dade County, even West Palm. Mm -hmm what high school football is like down yeah, it's here. It's totally different. You could go to any other city around the whole country, and it could be a random Friday night, and there'll be high school football games going on. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. You could go down to Traz Powell on a random Friday or Saturday, whenever the game is, and you'll see five TV trucks out there. Yep. You'll see all the reporters around the we have We have a guy down here, Larry Bluestein, who's like yeah. one of the most historically known Larry, high school. Larry. Right. Everybody knows Larry. But, but like it, it is truly amazing. So you're right. So at like 15 yeah, or 16 years old, right? No, that and too, right? Look, the celeb, we we were. You have like Rick Ross, Low Rider, Trick Daddy, uh, all these people, man. The Dolphin players, all the right. Dolphin players, because Big Vernon Carey, he he played at that's right. So he would bring guys to the to the games. So now you got guys on the sideline that you look up to. He like, oh, we definitely got to show out. For them. <laughs> right, right, show right. Out. And then when you got those guys saying, "Hey, yo, that's the greatest football team I have seen." These kids, these kids can play. That's that does something for us. And um, just like just like I, what I love too, you have Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater on the sideline. And you like Teddy, what you doing here tomorrow? You got a game tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey man, he coming and giving back, pouring back into the kids, man. And um, that's 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 another person that I like. Me and Steve, we're the same. Like he he's like a brother. He you, you cherish relationships and friendships like that because you see the things he's doing in the community. Right. Uh giving back and being being someone that the kids could touch and the kids could feel. Um because once people start making them millions of dollars, right. you don't see too many people come back around until they don't have it anymore. Right. And then they want the love and, and appreciation once they don't have it. Right. But um 
you know, the kids recognize Rear. Kids, kids see who uh, genuinely want to be around them. Um, like the Cam Newtons. Yeah, you know, right, right, know, right. Always, Newtons. always around the people. Always around the community. Yeah, You're yeah. right about that. Love that. Steve, I remember once he told me years ago when we were talking about Teddy, uh, and we'll get to Teddy in a second because obviously now he's a new head coach mm-hmm. at Miami Northwestern. Um, the neighborhood hope dealer. That's mm-hmm. what he. That's what he yeah, would call. Yeah. And, that, and I said that's probably name. one of the greatest nicknames I've ever name. heard. That is a great name. Because of the fact I know what Teddy does in the community. I know what he does for the kids. And I know what he does for guys that are his age or whatever, just mm-hmm. to kind of talk with them. Like you said, he's always around. And when I heard that for the first time, I'm like, I couldn't find a better nickname you, for somebody. You know what, something I just thought of that I that I do love about Teddy. Teddy, because you see a lot of guys do this. A lot of guys make it to the NFL. They spend their money. Right. You know, they get their jury. You know, they do all that stuff. I'm not saying Teddy doesn't have that. Sure. Um, but you'll see the, you'll see some same guys go ride around in the hood in the, in the Rolls Royce. Something that you know these guys can't get right. Right. Now. Yes, yeah, it's, it's 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 inspiring and stuff like that. But it's almost like you don't have to do that. Yeah. Like when you see Teddy, Teddy be ducked off. Like. Teddy might pull up in a van. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I saw Teddy in a minivan. <laughs> yes. Uh, not too long ago, before, obviously before he retired, he was still in the league. Yeah. But I saw, I think we were, me and my wife went to like City Furniture or something yeah. like that. And Teddy pulls up in a minivan. In and a I was minivan, like, man. is that you, Teddy you'll Bridgewater? See, right, yes, right. You'll see him like that. He ain't, he ain't wearing no flashy clothes right. all the time. He ain't got, he, you know, he might have his little jury here and there, but it's not like that's what he's. He's not flaunting it. Right, right. He's not showing the right. kids Good and work. all that stuff. He's showing the kids a different um, a different view, a different uh, lifestyle. Like, Because other guys come around, they only want to come around, drive around with all their chains on, all their jewelry. Like, yeah, that's cool. But one, that ain't what we're striving for. Right. You don't, you don't strive for material things. So you strive to be like, be people like Ted and like coming back. Doing, uh, giving bicycles, giving toys, right? Giving turkeys, doing everything that you're supposed to be doing. You know, just giving back to the community. Right. Giving, and, and and not saying he had to do anything with his money. He could just give himself. Right. And the just fact to be that present. he does that, yep. being present is uh, that that shows a lot about him. That shows a lot about his parents, his mom, um, and 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 the circle that he has, his friends and family that he has around him. It helps when you have good people around you. Yeah. And I can imagine that's what Teddy's got all around yeah. him right now is good people. And listen, he did something great for Steve a couple of years back, too, with the Sprinter mm-hmm. van and helping him out. He said, well, how, how can you get to the next level? The type of person he is. Steve said, I have this vision. And look at this vision. Yeah, yeah, and Teddy goes, put it on a little sheet of paper. Let me see it. Mm-hmm. They put it on a sheet of paper. And they went out and got that van. And, yep. that, and, and Steve went from there to this. And he's a perfect example of, of, of friendships. And helping out somebody yeah, who, you yeah. know who wants and needs to help you know you're doing it for the right reason with steve too exactly. no better person than steven we both know that <laughs> in general um okay so you're you're at a um like you said you're going you're trying to find that next step for yourself the league you sp- a cup of coffee in the league and you and you cup went to can- you went to canada <laughs> yeah. no and that's what hey. listen not a lot of guys get that cup of coffee i'm not saying that even in a bad way i love uh, a cup yeah, of coffee I appreciate, in the I appreciate it as soon as i signed that contract i, I still get the benefits of the nfl right yeah. i was just about to say good for you <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. right and you and you deserve it listen you put mm-hmm. your time in you deserve it that's fine i was playing in canada canada was amazing man. right you know um it was in it's a different game but to me, I had more fun playing that style of games than I did down here. Right. Because it is like an air raid, open, you know, throwing the perfect ball Perfect for out. a quarterback. Yeah, it's perfect <laughs> for quarterbacks. Quarterbacks, receivers. And receivers, the right. The hardest position up there to me is defensive back. I was about to say safety or DB, and right. Because those guys, the receivers have waggles up there. So they're running around and you're chasing them. The play hasn't even started and you're chasing them from one side to one side. <laughs> right. And they say hike. And now it's a run play. But you didn't got gas. Right. Okay, now they run it to the other side. He just ran a vertical route on you. And you're impressed, man. And the coach like, no, get in his chest. How can you get in somebody's <laughs> chest who's way that, up there right. running at you? You can't do that. So DB is the hardest job, or hardest position up there. But it was uh, the people. Um, everybody that was up there was uh, made that experience uh, great. Right. So I, I loved every moment of Canada. Yeah. That's awesome. That that's it's a good story too on that mm-hmm. that whole thing. All right, so let's come back to this. How do you watch a UM game? When, when you're watching, because I, I spoke to about forty different players that played for UM. Randall Hill can't watch it with anyone around him. Mm-hmm. 
he's got to be like in his own little house because he gets too crazy. Mm-hmm. I just had Kelvin Harris on uh, about a week ago. Same thing with him. He's got to almost be in a room by himself yeah. watching it. Can you watch it like with people around you? Are you, are you, are well, you a nutty, nutty old cane, you know, player? Or <laughs> can you watch it with a couple of people around you also? Well, home games, you know, I go to the home games. Okay, so you're at the But moment, I right. always only stay until halftime. So at halftime, I leave right. because I'd rather watch the game on – can't watch it around when no, I'm there because it's can't. too much shaking hands right. and kissing babies. I can't imagine how many pictures so, and stuff you got to take in the game. Right. So I always leave at halftime and I go right across the street to my parents' house and I sit down and watch it with my dad and we'll watch the games like that. Yeah, you're cussing at the screen. Right, so right. I'm doing everything that people were doing when I was playing. Of course, so, right. <laughs> I can imagine, right. But, uh, but you know, that's football. I do that with with anybody. Uh, you know, you're looking because – it's it's easy to be the person on the other side, you know, looking at the screen, cursing and all that stuff. But it's still we still don't know what's going on between the between the ears of these kids that's right. on the field at the same time. You know, even I play the position, I don't know what that guy's thinking. I don't know what he sees. I don't know any of that stuff. So, you know, I could criticize from afar, but at the end of the day I understand that, you know, still a human being down there playing right. football. Um but they still going to get these words. <laughs> Just like I had to endure them. Oh, no, listen. Yeah, right, listen, yeah. you got it. You, you, you're you a good example of not just the local kid that played for UM, mm-hmm. the local kid who played for UM. I got criticized a lot when it was, like I said, when something's wrong, it's Shakori's fault. Mm-hmm. Oh, he threw a pick in the game. It was a late pick. He shouldn't have thrown the ball. Just got to learn how to deal with it. That's man. it. I was going to say. Because the highs and the like, to follow up from your earlier question, like, you experience highs and lows, right. but you do have to understand, like, this is a game. And it's, the sooner you can get that in your head, a lot of things won't bother you and won't affect you. And it, it got to the point where, like, I know how to answer questions. So I, a lot of people weren't going to get, wasn't going to get me out of my character. Right. Like, for me to go against a coach to, even if a coach called the wrong play mm-hmm. or put us in a bad position. I was never going to throw nobody under the bus. Maybe now I'll speak on some things. <laughs> That's but different, right. It's different. But at the time, man, I could have thrown five picks in the game, and they could have all been my receiver's fault. But nobody would know that right? because I wouldn't let nobody know that. And you know who can deal with certain um, certain things. So it's like, why would I put that on my players and then they start playing different for me rather than just – because I know where I want to be. I want to win. Right. So yeah. if I take the blame, my guys look at me and say, I'm going to follow that guy. Right. Leader. Uh, right. Got to be a gonna, leader. But we're going to talk right. amongst ourselves, and we're going to correct this. We're going you know, to try to change it, get on the same page. But when we out in the open, man, y'all ain't never got it. They don't have to. But it doesn't make it uh, contagious because now once you start doing it for them, then they start doing it for you. Right. And now you got everybody's uh, taking ownership and accountability. And that's what you want on the team. So I wanted to always be held accountable to anything that happened on the, sure. or, uh, the offensive side of the ball. You could have missed, a, missed a, a block or anything. That ain't got nothing to do with me, but I'm held accountable because I should have. There's something I could do to help you get better as the leader, as the quarterback. Right. The Spoken that, as a true leader, by the yeah, way. Yeah, especially because when things are good, I'm going to be the one that's getting all the acknowledgement. Right. right. So when things are bad, I should be able to, you know, handle those those you know comments and things like that as well. You couldn't have said it better as as someone who had to be the leader of the locker room, because I think a lot of people nowadays they get caught up maybe at the end of the game, whether it's a quarterback or running back, doesn't matter what position, mm-hmm. and if kind of blame is thrown their way and it's not theirs, you'll see a lot of guys kind of point fingers. Point fingers. It's it's just the wrong thing to do, but you just had the perfect answer to that. Because, the quarterback answer, yeah. but I don't even think a lot of quarterbacks have that mentality. Also, I think that a lot of them are the me 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 quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Just from listening to you, and, and you would have been a perfect guy to play with. And it's the thing; it's not even a quarterback answer. I built myself that way to where that's how I am in life. Right. Like I'm the same way off the field. Like God is not your fault; it's my fault. We on the fire service. It could be right. something that something that's serious. We a team, man. Like I know certain people can't deal with con- constructive criticism or any. Right. Oh, lot can Right, a lot can Right. So it's like, hey, I got you. I will take that blame. Like, hey, I'll be the one to do the punishment. I'll be the one that do this. I know I can handle it. And um, 
Honorable. That's how I think that's how it should be. And if you, it's a lot of things that it, that if you truly want to be a certain way, you got to be that way on and off the field. You can't just be it. Okay, when we on the field and football, this is how I am. But right. in my life, I don't carry myself. That right. Way. No, I got to carry myself that way the same way. Fantastic. I, I love that. I like the insight that you just gave there, especially from someone who played at a at the hardest position to play, probably in all sports. And down here at the University of Miami, all the pressure in the world is on yeah. that one position there that you had to play there as well. Speaking of that, we'll end on this. I know you went to practice this week. Mm-hmm. Cam Ward, what do you think yeah. about him? Uh, forget the rest. Of I know you can go through everything. Yeah. But you're the quarterback whisperer right here on this on this show today. <laughs> what do you think about him? What do you think? What do you get to see from him at least? Look, I just like the fact that the kid can. It looks like he's the way he, um, I guess, has everybody honed in and focused it looked like he's been there for three four years already right um you could tell he's a guy with some with some um experience behind him uh, he just carries himself that way and i've been fortunate enough uh, uh you know to be around him um you know and his family and you can see where it comes from you can see where it starts uh he got a, he got a good good family behind him he got good people behind him um and like when you talk to the kid, you can see he's genuinely like a nice kid, but he takes command. Right. Um, everybody follows him, mm-hmm. and I and I'm gonna tell you, being at practice, it was a couple throws where I'm watching the ball in the air, and I'm like, who threw this? <laughs> who threw this ball? Because I could see trajectory rise. I could right. see this is about to be a dime. Right. And immediately I'm like, who just threw that? And Nine times out of ten, it was Cam throwing the ball. Right. But what I would, I tweeted this the other day. I was talking, hey, Miami has a good quarterback room. Uh, you got some experienced guys. Right. You know, Emory Williams had an opportunity to play last sure. year. Sure, yeah. Experience. You know, I think they should have opened it up more for him. Yeah, very vanilla last year yeah, when he got in the game. Yeah, very vanilla. Because, uh, I don't know, when I was a freshman, I was playing. Like right. I'm throwing the ball down the field. Right. Even if Coach Nix didn't tell me to, I'm making I'm trying to make plays. Uh, but the quarterback room, the dude Reese. Yeah. However you say his last name. Right, right. I'm not gonna even try it, right. That kid, we get is, it. That kid is talented. Though. Yeah, I think they were if Cam Moore didn't show up, I think they were still gonna be happy that with kid, him at quarterback. They, right. With whoever the, the competition would have been there. Right. Even if Cam didn't show up. Sure. And I didn't know too much about the kid. Obviously, he went to a smaller school. But being at practice and just watching him, like, throw the ball, you know, I don't want Mario to get mad at me and, and say I'm, I'm talking about a secret weapon or something. But <laughs> but the kid is athletic. Yeah. Uh, talking to the kid, it's like <laughs> you'll speak to him. And he the type of person I want to be around. I'm right. Like, okay. All right. Like, like, he's one of the guys that I would have been playing with. That, that would have made me compete every day because he's confident in himself. Mm-hmm. He shows, he exudes that confidence, but it's not like cockiness. And that's what I like about him. You know, I, I met the kid one time, that was sure. Monday, and then to watch him, it was a, it was, it was an eye-opening experience to see him actually playing. And then, uh, you know, Ja'Curry is Ja'Curry. Ja'Curry right. dropping dimes. And I, I was speaking to one of the coaches. I'm like, man, look, I don't know what he's been doing this offseason. But the way he's throwing the ball, you could tell he got that fire lit up on them. Like, hey, he's ready to go. And and one, he's a freak of a of a, of a human. I, I didn't know. First off, when I went to media day last year, I'd never seen him. I'd never had the one on one kind of mm-hmm. conversation with him. And when I went up to the little table that he was sitting at, I thought it was one of the linebackers. Yeah, I didn't know it was a quarterback. Yes, and I was like, wow, that dude is big. He's a freak, he's a freak to he's be playing freak. quarterback. Watching him deliver the ball and. Man, I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. If I, it makes me a little jealous because if I was they, if, ever, if I was his size, right. man, it, I was that. That's a game changer, right. man. That's that's half the battle. Uh, when it comes to going to the next level, it's half the battle. Everybody, you know, they start preaching the 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 attributes. You're in, oh, he's six four. He's he's like six five. He's a big dude. Yeah, he's uh, a big dude. Muscles everywhere, and he's fluid with his with his with his promotion. motion. Look like he's been working though. Yeah, because. You know, watching them last season and watching them uh, throw the ball and in, in practice, you can see a, a big difference. He's been working, so that's a that's a good thing. That's a good problem that Miami has now. Yes, I'm now sure. yeah, you want to see these guys 
apply the same stuff to the uh, to the game um, and win some games, but it's 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 something good to look look forward to. Oh yeah, and no, it's it's good. I'm sure a lot of Canes fans are very happy to hear that too from mm-hmm. you, seeing him in practice and knowing the kids and all the kids and but that whole quarterback them made room. Made me want, made me think about being a coach. I was like, man, I want to get out here and coach these guys. Right, like, These right. guys make my job easy. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, you walk in that quarterback room. Yeah. All right, just in case you're listening, Mario, if you need a quarterback assistant coach or a coach. It would be hard to pull me away from five Oh, yeah, good honest. luck. We right. Got, we, Let me retract that. Good <laughs> luck, Mario. You got no it'd shot. It would be hard right. to pull me away from You got no time. shot at that point. Even for, you know, once a week thing, you're not going to get yeah. him for that also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be honest, Ja'Cory. I, I never got to sit down and talk to you one-on-one like this before. Mm-hmm. This has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I feel like I've covered you since, well, I have since you were in high school. Uh, Talked about you for a long time. There was always something around you when you were at UM and and, and past that. And now hearing about the firefighter stuff, it is incredible. You did it. You really have done a really good job as a person. And and sitting with you and talking to you for whatever amount of time we've done, it's felt like nothing. It's been a really good conversation. And I appreciate you coming on Kranzis Corner today. I I appreciate you having me, man. Uh, it It is cool, man, like speaking to people that, that watch you develop and watch you grow throughout the years. And uh, and same here, watching you guys right, right. go through ups, downs, highs, lows. You know, we've all got to experience that stuff together because even though we may not, um, like, have spoken like that, we still see each other and hear about each other through the media, through everything. And uh, I'm always appreciative of, of, of people that's always been, like, you know, good in the media towards me. And I understand Media people have their jobs. Of course, there's, there's certain things you have to say. There's certain things you have to be able, to, but you have to be able to say certain things. So, but at the end of the day, I've never had any issue with anybody in the in the media. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience being down here in Miami and uh, having people like yourself, uh, you know, cover me, sure. and my teammates. My, God, since my, high school, my friends, man, I feel school. old. Yeah, yeah it, do, it do make me feel old, but <laughs> I'm very appreciative. Uh, I'll be honest. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. It's been a pleasure covering you for 20 years, whatever yeah, it's yeah. been. For good God, uh, don't remind me. Right, right. It's been a pleasure. We're all old guys now at this point, but it's it's nice sitting down and talking to you. It's nice sitting here at the players' lounge, also, uh, kind of our mutual friend Steve and Jose and what they did here. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, I love sitting here, and it's been a great conversation. But honestly. It's been a pleasure talking with you and just going through everything with you. There was no notes given in this interview. There was no don't ask this question. Ja'Cory didn't even want me to go over this stuff, right? I have a whole thing here sitting here. He didn't want to look at it, nothing. But this was really awesome. I really appreciate it. This has been an awesome episode here at Krantz's Corner at the Players' Lounge Barbershop. And we'll do it again soon. We'll bring you on again soon. I'm just going to follow you around. Next time you get a haircut, I'm going to be sitting here waiting. No, I'll be right here. Right, that's it, that's it. All right, that is the man, Ja'Cory Harris. This has been Krantz's Corner. Like, we're doing weekly stuff here at the Players' Lounge Barbershop with Steve and Jose's place. It's an unbelievable place. But we thank again Ja'Cory Harris for being our guest here in Krantz's Corner. Thank you. We'll talk to you again soon. All right, that's been it. So that's it. That's our episode here for Krantz's Corner. The man, Ja'Cory Harris. Thank you for watching and supporting as always, and we'll talk to you again soon at the Players' Lounge Barbershop.